Brits. Paddy from Andover wrote in saying this. Please, could we address the Brexit issues in Northern Ireland, especially the Northern Ireland Protocol? Someone needs to tell the truth about what's going on there, specifically the EU protecting their single market and not caring about peace or the Belfast Agreement. He went on, there's a possibility that Sinn Féin will come out with a majority in the Northern Ireland elections in May. And there is no way that the loyalists will accept that, will live with that. Violence is very possible, but no one's talking about it. Well, today, Paddy... We are going to talk about it, my good man. So thank you very much for getting in touch. Well, our next guest is Kevin Mayer, who's a commentator on British and Irish politics and author of What a Bloody Awful Country, Northern Ireland's Century of Division. And he joins us now. Thank you very, very much. Great to have you on the show. Right, well, OK, Paddy is deeply concerned about the potential for violence to erupt in Northern Ireland. Is that a possibility? It's always a possibility, unfortunately. Um, the Good Friday Agreement was uh, signed 24 years ago uh, last week. Um, but of course, it doesn't, it was, it was an attempt to finally remove the gun from Irish politics, as the phrase goes. But of course, it's never quite that straightforward um, in Northern Ireland. Um, there's still obviously a lot of tension and a lot of effort goes in um, from the two governments, the British and Irish governments, and all the parties to keep the place um, gently moving forwards and to try and stop it from tilting backwards. But of course, the, there is always the risk that, that that does happen. We've seen over the last year some very kind of irate um, loyalist protests about the Northern Ireland Protocol, which is the deal, um, the, the Brexit withdrawal, the part of the Brexit withdrawal agreement that effectively keeps Northern Ireland within the, the remit of the European Union for goods travelling between Britain and Northern Ireland. Um, and And... For a lot of loyalists, that's, that cuts them very deeply uh, in terms of their sense of losing a sense of the part of their Britishness. Now, it, it's important to sort of say that actually for a lot of mainstream unionists, ordinary unionists, it's not quite that big a deal. And I think what we'll see in a few weeks' time in the Assembly elections is a reflection of that, that actually the majority of people will vote for parties that support the Northern Ireland Protocol or who are not that bothered about it, frankly. So, so but there is a lot of noise and a lot of heat and a lot of tension at the loyalist end of the political equation in Northern Ireland. That's very, very true. We've seen a curiosity over the, over the last few weeks that the government and uh, the security services downgraded the security threat um, in Northern Ireland, which is a, a positive sign. And we've also seen signs that dissident Republicans that have been making a lot of the noise since the time of the Good Friday Agreement, a constant threat to, to, to to, you know, to the new settlement, that they are either winding down or have been, you know, effectively put out of business. And it, there isn't even talk of them coming into the political process. And then what we've seen is, is, a, is, a, is an upsurge of loyalist violence related to the protocol. So, so, so the situation ebbs and flows. It requires constant management, constant maintenance, constant fixes to try and, to try and get this through. But the, the, the issue of the protocol is it's, it's very difficult to resolve it in the way that lots of loyalists want. They just want the protocol to go. And there is no chance whatsoever of that happening, simply because there, it's, it's a binary choice. You either have a hard border on the island of Ireland between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic, 310 mile distance, which is impossible to police. But m more fundamentally than that, it would destroy agriculture, both in Northern Ireland and in the Republic, because there's, there's a lot of um, that, that, that border goes through lots and lots of farmland. And you end up with, with farmers on both sides of the border that have been incorporating for decades, frankly, uh, who, who wouldn't be able to keep export their, their, their milk. They've, they've just taken out the cows literally to be processed okay. across the border now that happens a lot there's a lot of that goes on so so, so the, the issue of the, the of the border and the protocol is not just about symbolism it's about very practical issues so the most practical way if you take all the heat and the symbolism out of the equation is the is to do it at the borders which is what they're doing at the moment